Good evening and welcome to the Golden Grotto Lounge, a place for Bond fans to discuss, well, Bond, obviously. And my guest tonight is Yannick Zenhäusern, who I invited after one of the last podcasts that went live, because I had enough of his insults and I wanted to <laughs> invite him personally to insult me on the air. Oh, wow. About my beliefs. And uh, <laughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to speak about the Brosnan era of James mm -hmm. Bond films that mm. has gotten a lot of hate between the lines in the past few weeks. I've read a lot of social media comments about the Pierce Brosnan films being too unrealistic and <laughs> over the top. And yeah. Yannick, you are... A supporter of Piers Brosnan, just as me. We've, we grew up with Piers Absolutely. Brosnan. And yes. Uh, a little back info about Yannick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been on the podcast before. Um, yes. You grew up with Bond. What was your first... Uh, you grew up with Bond. Yeah, that was a great intro. <laughs> you grew up with Brosnan. What was your first film? Um, actually, it was quite a, a complicated and convoluted story, so to speak. Well, on the other side, it's very easy. The first one... Well, let's break it down simple the, the first one that I saw in cinema was um, the world is not enough uh, I went with my parents uh, that was in 1999 obviously or 2000 obviously obviously uh, so I was barely nine or ten years old and my, my parents took me to the cinema to see the movie and just you know and I remember still to this day when I'm over, well over 30 uh, sitting in the cinema, seeing you know the, the Thames chase and all this stuff, and that's that's the moment where I was actually made a Bond fan because before you know I saw like like um, the Roger we had a lot of Roger Moore reruns uh, in in Swiss television, you know all the time there were all the Roger Moore James Bond movies. I sort of noticed them, but I was not a Bond fan. And then I saw uh, the World's Not Enough was completely blown away by it. I loved it so much. And then I also, you know, um, I also had I then got the Nintendo 64 uh, with the, the GoldenEye game. And then I was getting interested in what's the backstory behind this game. And I saw in our uh, DVD library the, the GoldenEye movie laying around. So I put this in and I watched it. And then it really started to solidify to be a J uh, James Bond fan. Hmm. Quite late to the party with The World Is Not Enough. You were nine yes. years old? <laughs> yeah. yeah, born in 1990, yeah. So in 1999, obviously, I was nine years old, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, you know, th those were like, 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 you know, it always, always makes you sound very old, but those were like the, the, the uncomplicated, easy times, you know. Uh, my parents were making, a, a, and generally speaking, parents at that time were making a huge fuss about, uh, about all this, this, this stuff that's being discussed these days, you know, with, with violence and films and games and so on. I mean, it was just, you know, we went to see James Bond when I was nine years old. I played Goldeneye when I was 10 years old and so on. So it wasn't a problem. And I mean, look, look how nice I, I grew up to be. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shocker there. Ob objection, Your Honor. Um... <laughs> It's what they would say in an American court, probably. Um, so, <laughs> but but um, yeah. First but, of all, I think it's not nice lying about your age. You were really born in 1990. Yes, of course. Like the it clown. <laughs> yeah. See, the I first thing there. that see, comes to mind. See what yes. I did there? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I allow those comebacks because you know I give you a lot of of crap as well. So so I allow you to. To have some comebacks every now and then too, so that's that's fine. Yes, that's very nice of you. Thank yeah, that, that you one, I don't like that one-sided <laughs> thing. You know, that's that's boring. No, you're absolutely right. And people who know us, uh, we play off of each other. Mm. So uh, that's that's what this episode is about. Yes. Well, and and I only so just a quick in, uh, interjection to that. And I only do that with people I really really like because people I don't like, I, I barely speak to them. So that's a huge compliment. My best friend, I mean, I have two very, very good friends, and, and I give them constant crap all of the time. That's, that's you know, sort of my uh, love language, if you will. Mm. I don't, mm. well, that's why we speak regularly. We don't know anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're, you're my go-to guy on a Saturday evening, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely, likewise, yeah. Uh, GoldenEye, the game, mm -hmm. could you buy it in Switzerland? Because in Germany, it was on the index. I couldn't buy it. I had to buy it in Austria. 
Exactly, and I, I had that discussion with with uh, with someone else I know from from Germany uh, a while back, and he said to me they either had to get it in Austria or Switzerland because, like you say, yeah, exactly, you couldn't get it in in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of violence. Yeah, ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, at that time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, blood coming from bodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, blood. You call it blood, but it was it was merely like two pixels of red color, so you could barely call it blood. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yeah. So um, my first film was Golden Eyes. Yeah. So, and and uh, as everybody knows, mm -hmm. I, I told this story many times. It was an accident because the yep. the projector had broken down in the other cinema, which was running Dangerous Minds with Michelle Pfeiffer to yes. tell it in a very short way, mm -hmm. running out of breath. Um. So I, I had no idea what it was about. But you're right. The Roger Moore reruns were on German television as well. This was sort of a thing. Right. Having, having the Roger Moore films, because I, I, I distinctly remember seeing Live and Let Die mm -hmm. as a rerun at some point in the morning. Yes, exactly. For, for was, no reason. It was exactly on the weekends and stuff. And I remember for one reason or the other, you, you said it was Live and Let Die. In my case, it was Octopussy, weirdly mm -hmm. enough. Right? Yep. No, I distinctly remember it was Live and I Die. Mm -hmm. In my case, Octopussy, I hadn't seen until I got really into the franchise. Yes. And bought all, all the VHS uh, cassettes from my pocket money. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was... Ooh, 97? <coughs> Must have been 97. Right after I saw Tomorrow Never Dies, I got really interested. That That's what turned me into a fan. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can probably agree that GoldenEye is a very dark film. Uh, from the story that it tells. Absolutely. The story, the music, the atmosphere and everything. And I agree with some people who say that it is a James Bond movie. We, there's no, no discussion about that. But GoldenEye is like a, a known entity in its own right. It's like even outside of James Bond, it's like its own thing with the atmosphere and everything it does. That's the weird thing about it. Mm. Do, do, do you agree? And everything fits so well together. Yeah, I do. Perfectly. Um, I mean, back then, when you look at today uh, mm -hmm. and a new Bond film being released, I don't read magazines anymore, for example. I rarely yep. read the newspaper. But back mm -hmm. then, you were absolutely hot for newspaper clippings about GoldenEye, whether it was an advertisement for BMW right. or what else was there. I don't know. I still have them somewhere, these newspaper clippings. Right. You collected right. them and you showed them around mm -hmm. in school. And I know there was uh, a poster that... Pro a poster composition that probably nobody mm -hmm. has ever seen again, which was uh, Brosnan's right. face and the Golden Eye satellite and mm -hmm. stuff, and it it advertised something batteries yep. or some shit. Um, yeah, right, right. Not even the BMW, but it was, I, w I wouldn't have been interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, and there was just so much. And then you, I actually, true story, I had to go into the village where I lived. You had to go into an electronics store that sold. Sold ridiculously priced uh, entertainment stuff, mm -hmm. and they had a CD section with like twenty CDs. Mm -hmm. You could browse through because that was not their main business. Mm -hmm. And the Golden Eye soundtrack was in there. All right. And the Tina Turner song. I mean, it's Tina Turner. Yeah. And the composition. Quite interesting mm -hmm. to listen to. Once the next film came out, when they were still on a two-year schedule, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies was advertised early enough. The trailers were running early enough. And back then, you did not have internet. Yeah. So you went to see some other random shit in the cinema. And there was a trailer for Tomorrow Never Dies. And you knew the gun barrel already. Mm. Which was referenced in there, in the trailer for Tomorrow Never Dies. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, okay, I have to see it. I got the soundtrack mm -hmm. before... Oh, really? The film was released. Yeah, I did. Yes, I yes. did. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I got it as a Christmas present. 98, it must have been. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was making a fan film. Yes, right. Um, uh, which which had basically the story of Thunderball, Down Is Off Forever mixed up. But mm -hmm. we needed music for it. So I used Tomorrow Never Dies because this score is so lush. <laughs> but the story yeah. is totally different from GoldenEye. I went away from this dark... Russian thread, mm -hmm. this looming Cold War mm -hmm. stuff. And I, as a child that I was, still was at mm -hmm. that time, I didn't get the full picture of Elliot Carver being a media mogul. Stuff no. Like but the way the film was made, just the right amount of action. It's brilliant. Um, 
it is really built brilliant and, and it's brilliant these films i mean you yep. say the world is not enough was your first so mm -hmm. you caught up on on the rest after that mm -hmm. but it gets a lot of hate recently on social media you know what i i and i sort of quickly asked you that before and and, and you said well no let's let's keep this for the for the podcast and, and talk about it there because you know i'm barely on social media anymore these days so can you tell me what what exactly is the hate that it gets i don't well, um, to to cobble it together, mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of voices that say uh, these Bond films of Pierce Brosnan, they are unrealistic, they are over the top, there is too much of everything, too many gadgets and die another day, and it's overloaded, <laughs> and it was the 40th anniversary, and there's mm -hmm. just too much of bloody everything, then the song was bad by Madonna, and creative choices, you know? And mm -hmm. then there are... A lot of people saying um, Piers Brosnan was not Bond enough. Um, oh, whoa, whoa, stop it right there. Yeah, oh, but, we're but not going to let this slide that pass. No, 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 no. But you say the same thing about Daniel Craig, and a lot of people love him. So it, it, now it's the same as it was back then, and it, I think it's cobbled up mm. every other week, you know? People yeah. saying Brosnan is shit, people saying Craig is shit, people <laughs> saying Roger Moore was too soft. Um, th things like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. everybody has an opinion, but I think the Pierce Brosnan films mm -hmm. were um, really strong for the time they were made in, and they reinvigorated Bond mm -hmm. after such a long period between License to Kill and Goldeneye, and I think it put Bond back on the map. That's my opinion. Uh Absolutely, I agree, and I mean it's it's great. I mean we we often, especially when we two talk together, we often use that term uh, popcorn cinema, and that's what it boils down to. I mean the Pierce Brosnan ones, they're really fantastically executed popcorn cinema, and the yeah. thing is that, um, like you said, gold and every every Pierce Brosnan Bond movie offers something completely different, uh, and I always feel like it's like every mood that you can be in, it offers something. When you're like when it's it, that's a fun fact. Oftentimes, the the Bond films that I watch are are like dictated by what the weather is outside or what what the, the season is outside. So, winter, uh, fall, when everything is dark and loomy, of course you go for Goldeneye, and it just went. You know, when it's that weather outside and so on, it just perfect atmosphere. And then, like tomorrow never dies is like a spring thing for me. You know, when you have still a bit of snow, like in the beginning scenes of the Alms Bazaar and so on, and then you get all the scenes in Germany, and it's like this lush, uh, exquisite, uh, noble kind of, of James Bond movie with a lot of style. The style is really in your face, but that's that's what it's made for. And then um, The World is Not Enough is like, I wouldn't say summer necessarily because it also has skiing scenes and so on, but it's like the, the film in the middle. And then Die Another Day um, is also, I, I feel like it's almost like, uh, I would say a summer movie almost because of all the Cuban scenes and so on. Um, but again, the Dino Today as well is, is just fantastic entertainment. It's like this bigger than life thing, of course, with the Ice Palace and everything. Uh, but you know, I sort of do get it. I mean, if people don't like it, it's, it's really a, a, a child. Those movies are children of the 90s and early 2000s, and you can tell. And I mean, we had this discussion before too. Uh, I, I, my favorite movie decades are the 80s and 90s, and I, there are some gems, of course, from the 50s, 60s, 70s that are great to watch, but I find, generally speaking, that those movies for me are too too slow and too self-indulgent um, that I can I can really have a really hard time watching them. And so now a young person going back to the 1990 movies, uh, 1990 movies uh, I mean, it's a couple of years ago too, uh, that they don't find it the way, they, they don't experience it the same way we do. I can sort of grasp it. I mean, it's great we have this conversation, but I mean, in the end, it's, you know, like you said, there are people who hate Roger Moore, there are people who hate Pierce Brosnan, uh, Daniel Craig, and so on. So it's always the same discussion, you know? You can barely take it seriously. But it's great we talk about it. I, d I take all conversations seriously. I mean, every every comment about the Bond films I, d I take seriously. And I, I think about it... Uh, wow, well, that separates us. I'm a deep thinker. <laughs> 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 well, it just, you know, those, those, I just, I, what, what can I say? I mean, and I had this discussion with a good friend a couple of days ago, and we said, you know, and I mean, this is really, I mean, this could really get us on thin ice, but I mean, look, back in the 90s when, when we watched, for instance, and my, the Pierce Brosnan James Bond was a great role model for us as well. I mean, 
obviously, I hope it goes without saying, not the shooting and killing of people and stuff, but in terms of how he handled himself, how he presented himself, he was manly, but he was not overly chauvinistic. Um, he was just a great role model that you were definitely influenced by, I mean, believe it or not. And I ask myself nowadays, what can young men, young people, what can they look up to? I don't because know. Because everything, everything is so muddled and everybody has to be or wants to be everything and there's now no there's no defined roles anymore and so on. It's just it's just a weird time nowadays. I, I, mm. That's the way I feel at least. I, I completely understand where you're coming from and what mm -hmm. you mean. Um, and I, I have always said, find your own path. Don't mm -hmm. strive after other people and what they do and try to imitate. But you're right. Brosnan influenced me in a great way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I once tried to walk like Brosnan. Uh, cause yeah, he's he a great stride. This, yeah, yeah. Abso absolutely. He's a great stride. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. mean, that uh, in the 60s was why they hired Connery. Because right. he, he walked like a, like a cat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's what they said. Looking out of the window, seeing him go into his car after speaking to him for the very first time, and they said, "Well, wow, look at his stride. It's like yeah. a cat." I don't know if they said puma or panther or something like that, but yeah. it was something along those lines. Exactly. And Brosnan was like this one hand in pocket, other mm -hmm. hand dangling down, like a sort mm -hmm. of cool, suave, uh, and um, it always reflects on who you want to be in life i think exactly i mean i'm, I'm not that type of flashy person that goes yeah. to a casino every other week and needs to dress like that and behave like that mm. and meet some russian woman at chemin de fer or something um, <laughs> but still um you wanted that kind of attitude exactly Exactly. To form or to flow into your way of behaving and presenting right. yourself. So right, that's, exactly. That's as far as I can go from ex exactly. explanation. Um, no, it's a great explanation, Benny. Absolutely. And I mean, we, we've talked about this once in the, with uh, one scene in Die Another Day. And that's so telling, you know, when he like, uh, after the, the, the fight scene, you know, the sword fight scene, when, when he walks up to Rosamund Pike... And then he sort of hits at her, and, and he just said, "You, I don't remember the, the, the quote specifically, but she said something along, along the lines, you'll never have that pleasure. And he just go like, oof. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. it. And you know, I, I, lo I love that, that coolness. Almost, it borders to aloofness, but it's like, yeah, you, you know, you've been turned out by a woman, so what? Life goes on, let's carry on. And he just, you know, he does the next thing. And so, it's this kind of attitude that not taking things too damn seriously, you know? Yeah. And I love and, that. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. Um, popcorn cinema, as you said, uh, was in the 90s exactly what I wanted. It is still what I want right. today. I would never mm -hmm. go to the cinema to see some Oscar-hyped drama. Um, mm. I, I wait for that to be on a streaming release or a home video release. Um, mm -hmm. I go to the cinema for two hours of fun and entertainment. Must be action. Um, can also be silly. I mean, I went to, yeah. uh, I don't know, some random King Kong film where I laughed mm -hmm. myself silly in front of the whole audience. <laughs> but um, it, it, was, it was called for. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, But mainly that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember a time where I went to see a drama that is mainly dialogue. No action sequence, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. Really don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Or a musical or something like that. No, I, wa I watched that at home. And all yeah, the right, good things right. are way in the past. So, for example, right. uh, I, I would have, back in the day, 1960, I would have gone to the cinema to see Psycho. Or I would have mm -hmm. gone to see West Side Story. Uh, yeah. Today as well, I saw the, the new West Side Story in the cinema. I was part of a mistake. But, okay. Not everything that's new is good. Um no, no, no. Neither was the the psycho of 1998. This was also shit. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But some people love it. But in the 90s, I did not go to the cinema much, because for mm -hmm. many films I was too young. Uh, I went to see Goldeneye. I went to see Jurassic mm -hmm. Park, and mm -hmm. not much more I can remember. Twister in 1996. Oh yes, yeah. mm -hmm. And I mean, back then it was a totally different cinema experience. People were smoking Absolutely. in the cinema. 
<laughs> right. There were there were little lamps there. Yeah. Uh, it was almost like a like a like here, like a lounge setting where you had an individual table with a lamp right, and a right. little button where you could call the nice looking woman with some ice cream or something. Right, right. And and you know what I remember too on that on that subject, uh, my my father for for one birthday he he invited me to go to the Bavaria Film Studios, you know, film mm, studios, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where they did like Das Boot and the of course, uh, what's yeah. die unendliche Geschichte. What's what's the English? Uh, the Never Ending Story. Right, of course, yeah, of course, The Never Ending Story, right. And and we went there by by the, the, the German train, of course, Deutsche Bahn, ICE, and mm -hmm. we went to, I don't remember if it was the very front or the very back, and there was always the Smokers Lounge, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. I, in the train, I specifically mm -hmm. remember my, my father is, is a smoker too, so he was smoking in the train, and there were a couple of other well, elderly men who were smoking cigars and so on, so... He, <laughs> Yeah. I remember that specifically, yes. And you were smoking like Bond. Exactly. <laughs> Although Pierce Brosnan doesn't smoke in his films, uh, I think the last cigarette smoked by Bond was Licensed to Kill. Um, uh, uh, ah, you mean Bond, Bond or has, Brosnan? Uh, Bond. Bond has, ah, okay. Bond has cigars. Uh, right, I exactly. think Brosnan smoked one or two cigars in his film. In Die Another Day, he smokes a cigar. Uh, right, right. But no cigarettes because, well, mm -mm. bad for your health and shit. Um, but but he I smoked in movies. Think he's what? Uh, Brosnan smoked in some movies. Cigarettes. Yes. Butterfly but not effect. The, not, not in the Bond films. No, 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 not in the Bond films. No, 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 not in the Bond films. That's right. That's just right. cigar. But uh, you tried to. At least I did. I tried to have a brand that would look stylish. Um, mm -hmm. Davidoff. That's what I smoked right. in, in mm -hmm. the 90s, Davidoff, with mm -hmm. a white filter and everything. Right. It looked sort of more like stylish, gentlemanly, and Sean Connery uh, smoked, I think, for some time, the same brand that Ian Fleming smoked, uh, Morley cigarettes. With, they also had a white filter with a golden ring mm -hmm. around it, something like that. Um, they, they stopped producing. But Davidoff is the closest okay. thing you can get, to, and they're very, mm -hmm. very expensive. Uh, are, are, are they still around? Davidoff they, they are. They are still around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I have to try those. Yeah. One Here time. in Germany, yeah. it's, it's uh, the most expensive you can buy. Uh, How I much think is it? Oh, I I really don't know. For a for a twenty four pack, I think you're close to nine euros or something. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But are they good? They're good. Yeah. Okay. They're good. Okay. Back in the day, they were. I'm not a regular smoker anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> here we are here we are in the in the, in, in the woke woke age and we are advertising cigarettes <laughs> well it's my podcast i can do whatever yeah. the hell i want yeah. uh uh yeah by the way uh drinks would you like something to drink while the waiter is not around uh <laughs> yeah i was just wanting always well, there are two waiters actually there's one very good looking woman oh she, i her. hope she, yeah yeah, uh, you, do you know her? Prunella. Socially, I mean? No. Sorry? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Prunella? I, Prunella. I'm just a guest. Is that is that in any way is that way in any name connected to your recent rediscovery of the faulty towers? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, admit it. <laughs> you could be right. <laughs> Farty <laughs> towels. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I love it. Yeah. 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 This this place is much like Faulty towers, just with <laughs> service. Uh, what what can I get you? What? <laughs> um, you know what? I sort I sort of had had an. It just I would be real in the mood for a coffee right now. Oh God! Right. You know me. Come on, it's been the same game since since like what fifteen years. Yes, you're like yeah. Or, yeah. If, and if, if, you if you like Vargas, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't whatever. All right. Exactly. One coffee and one red wine, please. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound... Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. That, no, sorry. Co the coffee's not for me. No, it's him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's for me. You can yeah, make it knows. an Irish coffee if you want. Uh, well, let, me just, let me just ask... Irish a second. coffee. I yeah, once no, no, saw no. somebody collapse on a bar stool with an Irish no. coffee, so you be careful. Okay. Now, wait, I just want to... Prunella, uh, just thumbs up or thumbs down. Pierce Brosnan, what do you think? God, don't scream. No, yeah, you know me. Come on, it's the same. It's always the same. 
Thumbs up. That, it's it's a, a thumbs a, up from Pranell. Uh, and, and I think he, course. you know what? I don't know who these people are who comment about Pierce Brosnan, but I think he definitely, I have never, never wet, <laughs> never wet a woman. Yeah, great. Never met a woman that's that. And I, I just mentioned the name Pierce Brosnan. They're like, oh. I never had any other reaction. I never had a woman say like, oh, no, he's too this, he's too that. They're always like, oh, wow, he's a very good looking man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really? Every single woman I've ever met, and you know, I often, I often, because it's sort of my gauge of if I'm going to get along with people, I just ask them, oh, James Bond, any connection? No, I don't like them. Oh, really? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I could see and you then, interviewing for a new job. And, do you have any <laughs> questions for us? Yeah, do you like, do you like Piers Brosnan as James Bond? No, we really don't. Yeah, you know, okay. I'm not really interested in your company and your job that you offer. So you, you can well. Duck off. But, <laughs> but you know, we make jokes about it. But I mean, you know, I think I think it's a really profound question. I mean, all jokes aside, because if someone, let's say, like like the two of us, if someone likes Pierce Brosnan, if he likes Bond, if he likes Goldeneye in particular, the odds are high that we are going to get along because we sort of we are into the same kind of thing or the same kind of things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay, now let me put this to you. Mm -hmm. This is this is a tricky and difficult question. For you okay mm -hmm. can you find something bad in one of his films where you say well okay that was something i didn't like is there something you mean in in, in his in one of his bond films or general in one of his or? bond films it's a bond podcast yannick get along please. yeah okay sorry 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 okay um well, it's the Swiss Sour podcast, you know. I'm so I'm not used to yeah. Bond podcasts we're, anymore. We're, so. we're doing a regular podcast in German <laughs> yeah. as well, yeah. But where, yeah, where okay. usually you hit on me, uh, uh. <laughs> right, right. Not so not in that way, but you you make fun of me. No, constantly. no, it's, I think that's I that's yeah, Why? yeah. It's just yeah. yeah. No Bond Bond films. His Bond films. No Golden Bond films. Okay. to die another day. Is there something bad where you would say this on a repeat? Mm -hmm. uh, went bad or something bad in a particular film mm -hmm. not to sugarcoat everything and say oh his sure. films are so gl glorious I mean no, getting down no. to the subject is there something where you say okay criticism in that regard is okay mm. so I, I would not say, I love them to death all his Bond movies, but I would not say they're flawless. Absolutely not. And I mean, of course, not, look, I'm not going for the obvious, like the CGI and Die Another Day. I mean, it's been said like a million times. It's the go-to knock joke, you know, when 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 you when you talk about the Pierce Brosnan movies. I mean, it's really lame now. Meanwhile, and I think, and honestly, those are a couple of scenes, you know, with the invisible Aston Martin and the the hang gliding or what the, the, the surfing. I mean, there's a couple of scenes. I can I can gloss over those. That's not a problem. But I have to say, not that it's necessarily bad, but there are a couple of scenes or segments in every movie that I usually find myself skipping. That mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's for sure. What are for they? It, um, now, generally speaking, and that's, gonna, that's going to rub many people the wrong way. I'm not a big fan of the music videos. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, it's they're nicely done and the... the, 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 the in most cases, the music is good, but I just, I want to see a movie. I don't want to see a music clip, you know, that's, that's kind of my thing. And in GoldenEye, what I usually, what I usually skip is like very little, but what I skip is um, the car chase at the beginning with the Ferrari, also with Bon and Xenia. Mm. And also, I also skip uh, a lot of, of the end of the, cra of the, f the chase and the fight on the cradle. After really? the music, yeah, after the music had stopped, you know, when, when, um, so that's after, uh, James Bond flew down the staircase and then they're just looking for each other. And so I find that kind of, yeah, it's a little bit boring. That's something I could say now, now building up to it, that the endings of the Pierce Brosnan Bond movies sometimes are quite weak. In Goldeneye, it's not really, yeah, of course you could go with the argument, yeah, it's this man to man fight, you know. And it's very personal and so on, okay, but it's visually it's not that appealing. Tomorrow Never Dies, I always feel like the, the movie, the climax is, is way before actually they have this end scene with Kava getting killed and Stamper getting killed. The world is not enough, the submarine ending scenes I find quite boring too. And like the big ending is like uh, Renard getting this uh, nuclear rod fired into his body i don't think that's very interesting and die another day the ending yeah 
it, that that's just overdone. So that would be a point that I would say I'm not a big fan of are the endings of the Brosnan Bond movies. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? I see, I absolutely see what you mean. Yeah. And what what do you think of what do you think about it? Oh, here she is. Thank you. Thank you. Here's Thank your coffee. You. Yeah. Thank Here's you. Your coffee. <laughs> Come me, me some slack. Yeah. <laughs> um, skipping, 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 skipping. Um, I really have to think hard because mm -hmm. I'm I'm an I'm an all out movie lover, but mm -hmm. I mean uh, I don't often watch the films. That is not even a secret anymore. That's um, right. Mm -hmm. uh, I I wouldn't put the Bond films on just for fun. I rewatch a lot of other stuff. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but the Bond films I've seen so often. I mm -hmm. often don't think if I put that in now, I will turn it off after fifteen minutes because I know it all. Uh, I should watch them more often. But I think the Brosnan ones I've seen a lot. I've, I've seen them more than the others, definitely. Me too. Right. Um, right. You're right about the world is not enough. The submarine scenes. Uh, the, the, uh, I mean, do you remember the game? The world is not enough. The submarine Absolutely. scenes in the game. Oh, that was tedious. You, oh my you, god. You should have had a Benjamin plays the world is not enough because <laughs> oh, that yes. that really sent me over the edge. Yeah, That's I can imagine. I mean, because you lose your way oh, through this horrible. labyrinth of yeah. shit. It's horrible, um, and it's it's really a labyrinth of shit and water. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. and that's I, a nice I've quote. Really, that's, that's why that. I lose my nerve. Yeah, yeah. And mm. in the film, it's I mean, uh, sequences in a tight space are always difficult. Mm. You either get them right or you get them wrong. In comparison, no. uh, the fight uh, on the train in the world. Uh, yeah, of course. The the <laughs> fight on the train in From Russia with Love. Um, mm -hmm. Tight space, fantastic fight scene, uh, lighting, camera, all perfect. Well done. Mm -hmm. Submarine, the world is not enough. All over the place. Mm -hmm. Weird. Just weird. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, plain weird. And then the submarine exploding. I, I don't, I, don't I, I mean, I don't know, but I don't think that is a, the way a submarine explodes. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, you have a point there, right? Right. But I, I mean, I've never seen it, but I, and I imagine mean, I, so. Yeah, and I mean, but I often find that with Bond movies that they always, I mean, again, Bond movies always great. I mean, what was the quote of, of um, that was in the last uh, Bond Grotto podcast? Oh, that was referring to John Barry. A Bond movie is always great, but there are some that are better and a little bit worse. Some, something along those lines was, was the quote. And I often find with, with James Bond movies that they, they try to, to have, so, uh, you know, set pieces every now and then in the movie. And then sometimes... Uh, one of the set pieces feels like now the movie's concluded, but it still goes on. I mean, it's the same like like I've just rewatched Oct Octopussy um, a couple of days ago. Actually, no, it was yesterday actually because mm -hmm. um, you know the the re-release of of the soundtrack. The soundtrack, you know? yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then I felt like you know first you have all these scenes in the jungle, and I felt like. Oh, now a lot of time has passed. But then, of course, the whole thing with Karl Marxstadt and all these things come. Yeah. And then after Karl Marxstadt, there's another part of the movie. And so so there are like many movies, you know, in sequence almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't find an ending. Exactly. Right. And I remember, I mean, we've talked a lot to John Glenn. You know, you remember right. well, yeah. because that, that is something you don't forget. And <laughs> when I showed my documentary film to mm -hmm. John Glenn and his wife, pretty much exclusively, I don't know who was there. I think there was nobody else there. No, I don't. Pri mm -hmm. Private screening of my film. Were you there? I don't know. No, I was not. But I remember where it took place. And I remember that it was in a morning, I think. And there was. It was in the morning. And you, yeah, exactly. And you told me it was just you and, and, and the, the Glenn couple. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And John Glenn said. I liked your film a lot, but it has several endings. It has a scene where you think it's the end, and mm -hmm. then there's another scene, and then you think, well, that must be the end, because we're nearing two hours, and then there's another scene. And he said, that's never good for a film. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Have Not you watched the Bond movie end. yet? <laughs> but, but, well, it's... Uh, I don't know. It was my, my way of editing. I don't know. But uh, he, he came to understand why I did that. So it, yeah, it was e e easy to explain. Um, that's right. And, I, and the, I, the, 
you know what my yeah. just just a short story to to interject that one of my favorite memories was when do you remember you had that one scene in your documentary as well and uh uh where you were standing in front what was the name that the exit of the autobahn uh Hüttenweg in, in berlin Hüttenweg. Yeah. right the, exactly exactly and, and motorway yeah exactly and then you had you you put in the the movie scene you know the the, the chase scene on on the autobahn mm. <coughs> pardon me uh in there And we and we, we both said to each other, you know what, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're, and I mocked this kind of John Berry um, Bond track uh, into that scene uh, where originally there was no music. And, and we, we and I remember specifically, we said to each other, uh, once we knew John Glenn is going to see, is he going to notice? And I remember you came back and told me that yeah. John Glenn was leaning back and said like, was there music in there? I don't remember putting I music know. in that yeah. scene. <laughs> so great and yeah. i thought yeah it was, that was one of my favorite yeah. things <laughs> yeah yeah and there i mean there was music in there uh mm -hmm. he he just didn't remember but um there <laughs> it was a different kind of music. i explained it to him it was a different kind of music we reworked it obviously right. uh but he found that fantastic yeah absolutely <laughs> so he, he loved that yeah and i mean uh, you have to remember these things i mean imagine how many films this this man has made yeah yeah not just and bond he, No, 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 in general, yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, great man, great man. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And another thing I would love to talk about is um, sort of coming back to Pierce Brosnan. Um, you know, I said that I love his Bond movies, but in general, I'm a huge uh, Pierce Brosnan fan. And, and there, are, I think my second favorite movie, I mean, my, my all-time favorite movie is Golden Eye. I've said that many times. But I would say my second favorite Pierce Brosnan movie, or you know, I would even perhaps say... No, not my favorite movie, but a, a, a movie I love very much with Pierce Brosnan is also Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak, yeah, of course. I knew you oh, would say that. that's, yeah. I knew you would say that, yeah. Mm. And, and, he, and he's so, and you know, he's not Bond in that movie, but he's still Pierce Brosnan, so he, he, he really hits that sweet spot again. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like and, and he shows a little bit of his softer side, you know, when he has this, this kind of thing going with, mm -hmm. the, with the town mayor, with the woman. Um, but he's still a man that you can look up to and that he's, he's in control of the situation. And even though everything literally breaks apart and goes, goes to hell, um, he's, he's, you know, he would be someone you, you turn to and rely on and say, hey, what are we going to do? How do we get out of this, this pickle? Hmm. I should rewatch that. Yeah, the other day I, yeah. I almost did. I have an open mm -hmm. mat version of that. Mm -hmm. If you oh. ever, if you're ever interested, it gives sure. you 15% more of his process. <laughs> 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 no, no, but uh, uh, but uh, the the effects in that film are really dated. Um, I think it doesn't work well today. It doesn't look good on on a, on a Blu-ray. No, uh, I would I would back to differ. I mean, I saw a couple of. I, I mean, I follow a couple of YouTube channels where they sort of channels that are. Uh, dedicated to to VFX, and they actually still say to this day that Dante Speak is one of those movies that still holds up very nicely in comparison to other uh, 90s 90s productions in terms of, of visual I mean, effects. It, it's still better than Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, by miles, you know. Yeah, that's um, true. but you're right. You're right. I watch everything that P uh, Pierce Brosnan does, even mm -hmm. Mamma Mia, where he sings. Oh, uh, that's, oh no, 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 no. But but it's difficult. It's a difficult watch. Yeah. Um, but it's him, and it's it's somehow cute uh, of him <sighs> trying his best in in yeah. doing that. You know. He, but, but everything else, there were so many films where I thought that he made much later than his bonds, like 10, yeah. 15 years later, where I thought, oh, he could still do it. Yes. Right. Yeah. He could. He, he, he sort of still could do it nowadays. I mean, you. I just a, a week ago I saw a picture of him on a, on a cover of a magazine. I don't remember what it was, but he still looks like he could yeah. kick some ass. Excuse I me. mean, that is a, uh, they do a lot of retouching, obviously. But um, yeah, of course, of course. When you watch, I don't know. Let, let me randomly get uh, the Foreigner or oh, the, nice, that nice. that other film where he plays that hitman. Or Fast Charlie, that which is the latest one. Oh, the it November was, Man. You, or the November Man. November yes, Man. Right, exactly. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, there was a scene where he was behind a wall and he was observing the scene before going into action, and I thought this man could still put out a Bond film. Absolutely. I no, would yeah. still believe that. Absolutely. And yeah. he doesn't look as as old as Roger Moore did in A View to a Kill. 
That's right. That's right. And and especially, you know, these days, they've come a long way with stunt doubling and doubling work and, and all of that stuff. So he could more convincingly do, you know, like heavy stunts and stuff. But that brings me to another part. I mean, Pierce Brosnan to me is not like he can do it and, and you believe him. But to me, is not the physical guy. He's more like the cool, suave guy who, of course, who runs and jumps and fights and shoots and everything. But he's not... To me, it, it looks weird when he does, you know, extremely over-the-top physical stuff like Tom Cruise or Daniel Craig, for instance. Hmm. It's not, you know, it doesn't it doesn't fit him. Yeah, but stuntmen did the work. So you hmm? still you still think, when you watch the film, you still think, uh, I don't think it's Pierce Brosnan jumping off a building or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's James Bond jumping off a building. Right. I don't right. care if it's Pierce Brosnan or not. I don't care if Daniel Craig does his own stunts because mm -hmm. most of the things that Daniel Craig and Tom Cruise do, I think are reckless. Yeah. And Tom Cruise hurt himself often enough right. to tell you a tale about that. Daniel right. Craig did as well. Mm. He, he, I don't know what, I, I, I really don't remember what he sprained in his body. I think at one time it was an ankle, then it was mm. a wrist. And whatever, but it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, I read the story that um, who was it? Uh, um, Steven Seagal broke mm -hmm. broke Sean Connery's wrist. Right, that's true. Pre preparing for Never Say Never Again. So these things yeah. happen. But it's good that we have stunned people. I mean, Wayne Michaels, who did the Golden Eye Jam, mm -hmm. Jump uh, from mm -hmm. the Dam. I almost said the Golden Eye Jam from the Dump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a nice that, one too. Yeah, that 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 would have been gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would have, yeah, would have killed it. it um, but yeah. you know, you know, it's stuntmen doing these things. Yes, but of course. When I course. watch it, for me, it's Bond. And as long right. as I mean, Wayne Michaels' hair didn't even match Pierce Brosnan's hair in that scene. But you know, later, you don't mm. know at the day when you are in the cinema. Yes. You just you just think, oh, he's not going to do that. He's not going to jump off that dam. Yeah, right. And I think it's always it's always also the question, you know, are you going to allow yourself to to buy into the the magic and the make believe of a movie or are you And this is why I don't get people saying, you know, oh, it's over the top and all this stuff. I mean, it's a movie. Come on. We all know it's not realistic. No Bond film is realistic. It's it's not meant to be realistic. So how can that even be an argument, you know? And to me, it's always the question, are you going to, like I say, are you going to allow yourself to buy it? I mean, as opposed to you, I, I regularly watch the Bond movies, especially the Pierce Brosnan ones. I mean, his four movies, I watch about maybe each one 12 to 20 times a year. I mean, I really watch them very often, especially I know them in and out. But when I do, you know, the my projects or work on the game and stuff, I have them run on the other screen and, and just take them in on the side. But <coughs> to me, the point is, are you constantly going to, you know, and I, I still allow myself to, to be in that world every single time. I'm not going to go, oh, that's going to happen now. And, oh, look, now when they when they fly out of the helicopter, you can see the puppets and, and all of this stuff. I'm just going, I, I, let, I allow myself to get into this world and just be there as opposed to question everything. Absolutely. You know? And um, since the internet came up, I mean, when mm -hmm. the Brosnan films hit cinemas, GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies, the internet was in its infancy. Right. Uh, and after that, put another five years on top of that, going into the early 2000s, when everybody had access to the internet and when social media came up, suddenly everybody was a film critic. Right. Because you could voice your opinion with little to no repercussions. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And that's the world we have today. When you release mm. a comment online, mm. I mean, you can have a fake account and you can post vile things directed at people, directed at films, directed mm. at us, uh, for mm. what I care, you know. <laughs> um, but it, you can get yourself a level of anonymity mm -hmm. and present yourself as the person who knows it all and says oh i've studied film and this is no good and and barbara broccoli is utter shite she's even worse than broccoli the vegetable um <laughs> but in fact when you look at die another day you know before mm -hmm. that after after the world is not enough people said oh we want more fun and we want more gadgets and we want more this and more that and they listened 
and mm-hmm. they did it. Mm-hmm. Of course, it overloaded the film, yes. but they did it. Right. They gave it. I mean, the other day I was thinking about that on my way to work, no less. Uh, why, why in the hell did Q give him this ring? in Die Another Day. Did he mm-hmm. know that Bond would eventually end up with a glass <laughs> s- floor yeah. that he would like to smash? Why in the yeah. hell would he give him that ring? It's just because fans demanded more gadgets, more mm-hmm. fun, and this fulfilled both. It was right. fun because they had John Cleese giving it to him, right? and it was action in the moment where he used it. Right. So they combined it well, so nobody can ever tell me that Broccoli and Wilson do not listen to the no. fans. No, 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 that's right. I mean, right. They've, they've done it less and less over the years, uh, yep. doing their own thing, uh, especially with Daniel Craig. I don't think we fans have much to say, but, uh, well, some fans f- think of themselves very highly. Uh Yes. They think they can influence the franchise. It's not ours. It's it's theirs. So right. that's where it starts. Um, yeah. And if you don't like this particular era of Bond films, well, watch another. Right. Okay. And right. if you like silliness, complete mm-hmm. silliness, watch Roger. I, I, I mean, there's something for everyone. That's right. And I mean, that's also sort of a family tradition, like you just mentioned, the ring and, and, and these things. But I mean, Covey Broccoli did that as well. I mean, they kept in Sergeant Pepper because he was becoming a, a, like, a, like a fan favorite. The same was with Jaws. So they always had this tradition of listening to people. But sometimes I, can, I think this can be a disadvantage if you listen to people too much because sometimes people don't know what they actually want or what is actually good for the result. Mm. Do you know, I had a comment the other day on a video of mine where uh, somebody commented, it's cute how all these Bond films call him Cubby without knowing him personally. I thought that was that was interesting because we always call him Cubby Broccoli. But, but, but I think it's also, you know, when, when I mean, we as Bond fans, we've seen footage and interviews with him. And I mean, you, you always have to understand, and that is maybe leaning very much to, uh, out, out the windows, but I mean, he comes from an Italian descent. And I mean, I had, I had a grandmother the, uh, who was uh, Italian and so on, so I kind of know that culture a little bit. And um, there was a lot about respect, um, about, uh, you know, belief also, belief in God and these things. But I mean, he, he also... Of course, on one side, he was he was a tough businessman, but he still had that Italian kind of thing about him where, I mean, the stories have flowed many times where he like ordered like tons of pasta that he cooked for the service crew and so on. Mm-hmm. So, so to the people that brought respect to him and that respected him and that liked him, he liked back very much. So I think as a Bond fan, would Cubby Broccoli still be alive? Um he would be absolutely, you know, heart warmed when you would call him Cubby. And he would want that, I believe. Maybe that's overstating everything, but uh, that's how I see these people, you know? Mm-hmm. I absolutely uh, agree. I always call him Cubby. I don't know why. Yeah. I, just, I mean, uh, but so I would somehow never say Bubsy Broccoli. Mm, uh, but, no, not uh, really. But I, I use that uh, when I answer that comment because I hear a lot of fans calling her Bubsy or Babs. Um, mm. I, I don't know. I find I find it odd. I personally don't do it. It is odd, and I mean it's 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 always it's it's very simple to give these people flack. And I mean, of course, I mean, I, you know, we we have many different you know outlets where we talked about our opinion of where the, the, the Bond franchise is headed and how it's been going the last couple of years. And I'm absolutely no fan of it. But I mean. Still, you have to say that they have given us some of our most favorite Bond films. And I mean, you have to give them credit for that. And you can tell in all corners and everything that they're just somehow tired of it. I mean, these people are also getting older and they've done it for so many years. I mean, Barbara, has, Barbara Broccoli has not started with Goldeneye. Of course, that was the first production uh, that, that she and her stepbrother uh, led, so to speak. But they were in it a long time before. And I mean, especially in the Brosnan era, you mentioned before... The whole management of the outlet was much better handled. I mean, I remember tomorrow and as you said it, there were like magazine covers, there were interviews, there were like massively extensive electronic press kits with so much stuff jammed in it. Even the the, the commercials for for the Tomorrow Never Dies game featured Desmond Llewellyn, 
So it was everything was done with much more love and care and 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 fire for the product, and that's what I feel has been lacking for the last ten, fifteen years. It's true. It it almost felt like its old cinematic universe. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah also exactly. the uh, and I had it the other day in a podcast the thrill ride in london i remember mm -hmm. how it was called it was called 007 license to thrill it can be that easy and it, it it was a whole q workshop with a recorded message by q and by m oh. played by judy dench mm -hmm. and this was an all-encompassing uh, thing to experience and i remember um and i recently saw a clip of how that was made so it, you were sitting in a seat that moved Mm -hmm. And they showed you a film from the POV point of view of Bond uh, with a, a totally own storyline with an own villain and an own Bond girl, things like that. And it was like 15 minutes and you mm -hmm. went out and you went straight back in again. <laughs> And you got That's a little great. ID card with your picture taken. As, and I still have there this shit. There you I go. mean, this is, uh, this is over 20 years old now. Yeah, and I go. still have it and I look look at it and i think wow you've been in london at that time it was, mm. your, it was your first time in london and this was there at that time right. the place doesn't even exist anymore mm -hmm. i mean it does mm -hmm. exist it, is, it was the trocadero center at leicester mm -hmm. square um and i think there is some uh there's an ar arcade in there or something mm -hmm. uh, or at least for years there was an arcade in there mm -hmm. and um there was also on another note famous film franchise there was an alien ride a couple of mm -hmm. years after that mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. and i uh, i think oh, i think i mix it up uh because i've been, i've grown so old <laughs> uh, in 1995 it, i think it was an alien thing and in 1998 i went back and that was licensed to thrill yeah mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because it coincided with tomorrow never dies but in 1995 yes. it was alien invasion oh, so yes. you really went downstairs in the trocadero center and mm. you had a team of uh soldiers u.s soldiers guiding you through this dark thing and it was the same venue where in the end two years later uh license to thrill would be mm -hmm. and there were by clever use of lighting and 3d laser technology aliens coming towards you and i remember oh. this was so fucking frightening <laughs> i can imagine yeah i held on to my mom not because i was scared i didn't want her to get hurt by an mm -hmm. alien um and the, these things i mean if you've seen the alien franchise i don't want to meet one of them in a dark corner <laughs> no, not really they no. are pretty frightening yeah and <laughs> this was this was an experience i will never forget and license to thrill was sort of like you did not have to walk through something you did not have, mm. have somebody to tell you something you just sat in a seat and you watched a film from a point of view yep. uh but still it was bond <laughs> it was bond right. and you right. happily paid another i don't know three or four or five pounds or what it was uh, to go back in and i think i did it four times <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i can imagine yeah and but, there was but, the there was the, the 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 car was in there they propped the car in there oh, the lotus yes. uh wet nelly the lotus esprit was oh, down yes. there on yes, some boxes yes. it was really made oh, up like nice. a q workshop oh, cool. fantastic That's and they, these things don't exist today no, it's it's a f but you know what in general now now talking about it and hearing your story I think um I have just in the last one year I've I've switched my workplaces a couple of times um and you know because they, they didn't like Pierce Brosnan enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it boils it boils down to that in the end yes but yeah, uh, see? <laughs> you meet a, you meet a lot of new people from all walks of life and in all sorts of age ranges and and you know sooner or later when when you're like outside smoking or sorry not smoking um catching some air um you talk to these people and of course at one point i just you know we we come to we talk about music and films and then it, of course my not too late my go-to question is how do you like bond and you know of course everybody knows him but what i noticed in the last couple of years that people are like yeah yeah it's okay you know, so I feel like outside the Bond fandom, the, the, generally speaking, the bonfire is not as it was once once upon a time. You know, it's, it's sort of faded away a little bit. People know about it. People know it's still there. But it's not as omnipresent as it was. 
Yeah, you're right, and that is uh, uh, on on another podcast episode that will come later. I will focus mm -hmm. on that together with uh, my regular guest Willie, who asked his 14 year old uh, daughter mm -hmm. to give her opinion on Bond because they watched Bond films together, mm -hmm. and uh, she agreed to note down some points and give them to us um, mm -hmm. for analysis to see what Generation Z thinks of Bond. Um, I value this uh, this uh, insight and this opinion because mm -hmm. I am of the same opinion. Um, it's very difficult to get a new audience to bond mm -hmm. uh, at, at this point in time now, 2024. If they come up with a new film, of course, people will flock to the cinema because um, it's mass consuming mm -hmm. of films. But who goes away like we did in the 90s and say, mm. oh, this is my new go-to franchise. I'm becoming a right. fan of that. Right. People just go to the cinema to have two hours of escapism and think nothing of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. afterwards. So, oh, I've, where have you been? Oh, I've been to the cinema. What did you see? Oh, I've seen a film like James Bond or something. The, right. The, 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 the fish with a golden gun or something. Exactly. Exactly. Can't, exactly. can't even remember the title. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. And and I have a couple of friends that are like in your age range, and and they're all like they're all in the Pierce Brosnan. I mean, they have not grown up with Pierce Brosnan as as their first James Bond, which obviously in many cases influences your your choice of favorite James Bond. You know, in mm -hmm. in, in exclamation marks. But um, they often say like, you know, we love Pierce Brosnan because it was the last James Bond who had like this flamboyant music with it that went so nice with his persona. Um, and, you know, he had a little bit of the wit and he had a little bit of the ge the English gentleman. It's always the thing that you hear. And that has been gone after Die Another Day. And I say, yeah, well, I agree. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's what you often hear, but I absolutely agree. The fun, the thrill, and just this, this bigger-than-life kind of experience has mm -hmm. vanished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but that's, that's the point that many people make. Too slick, too smooth. Yeah, but then again, you know, I've talked about before when I recently rewatched Octopussy, and like, I had to say to myself after having after I was done watching the movie, I said, how can people not like Roger Moore? I mean, of course it's silly and of course it's over the top, but again, he's a professional British spy who has to handle all sorts of situations, and he just has a way of not taking, like Pierce Brosnan, not taking things too seriously. And that is what is asked of him. I mean, if in every situation he would start crying or would be panicking, but he just does it with his quips and his humor and his heart. I mean, for me, it works perfectly. I don't know what what's, what people's problem is with it. Uh, me neither. Me neither. Right? Final question of the day. Mm -hmm. What James Bond are you closest to in real life? What would you say? <laughs> That's exactly me. I have to go with Roger Moore. Me too. Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought fun, so. It? Yes. <laughs> he, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has a very. When we were talking about strides before, he walks very awkwardly. But it's he, not that. I mean, it's, it's no, 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 the no, 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 and the, and the yes, dialogue. Yes. <laughs> I was not because, saying we were the closest. We, we are so silly in real yes, life. You yes. know, we would be yeah. the epitome of Roger Moore. Exactly. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree I know. more. I did yeah. it at work today because yes. um, uh, there, there, there is a colleague of mine. She's very young. She's 25 or something. Mm -hmm. And she had to do the late shift. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I finished work at 3 and she had to go on till 5.30 or 6 or something. And they always do it in a pair. So there is somebody mm -hmm. else. And that was a colleague we both don't like. And I said, um, who do you have the late shift with? And she said, with uh, name blacked out. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I said, with a raised eyebrow, uh, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a total Roger Moore thing to do. <laughs> and then I said, well, have a nice evening then. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, was, it was, Pierce Brosnan wouldn't say that. Pierce Brosnan no. would say something completely else, more, no. smooth, more smooth. But uh, Roger well, Moore would say it with a twinkle in his eye and a raise right. of an eyebrow, and that's exactly what I do in my daily life. Yeah. And and you know what? And I think and I think you know people who are who are uh, humorous and so on. I mean, first of all, uh, you know, being humorous uh, takes takes some intelligence and also some emotional intelligence. And a little 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 thing that I love so much. I mean, I, I watched Moonraker just today, in fact. 
And I, I, th I think it's such a cute thing that he has going with um, Corinne Clary. Uh, what is her mm -hmm. name in the movie again? The, the, Corinne the Dufour. Corinne Dufour. Dufour. And it's such a sweet little remark that he makes, but it, it really warms my heart when he opens the safe and then he uh, points it at his chest and he says, Ah, oh, there you go, a heart of gold. Yeah. It's so yeah. sweet, you know, and it shows how how also how, how human he can be, how without being, you know, like crying and silly and everything, but it's just such a little remark that I find so sweet and, and soothing. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. uh, and, and I don't know what Bond said it, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a lot of <laughs> at work. We're just crazy. Basically, mm -hmm. we're all Roger Moore's in in a in a in a live and let die <laughs> version of our workplace. <laughs> um, it very at points uh, no at times very sexualized you know mm -hmm. um and is, i work in in the in the restaurant and there are you have of course chefs in the kitchen mm -hmm. and sometimes they say something weird and you find yourself saying oh, that's not what she said <laughs> yeah of course but yeah. I, I, I for the life of me i can't remember what bond said it Did was it roger bond moore say? it sounds like roger moore it sounds like something roger moore would say that's what that's, the, uh, a Bond that's, said. That's, that? that's, that's what not she, what she said. Yeah, something like hmm. that. I might be completely wrong, but uh, that, that's hmm. that typical comeback. Um, I don't know. Well, when we talk, it, it, it borders to the sleazy, so it could also be uh, Tim, uh, uh, George Lazenby. Could be, yeah, but he wasn't that funny. No, uh, no not uh, really. Uh, and also not Sean Connery. Uh, I <laughs> think it must it must have been Roger Moore, and it might be some some completely random situation like uh, mm -hmm. oh can i have a piece of that and the, and the chef says oh that's way too hot you shouldn't eat that and i said well that's not what she said <laughs> things <laughs> things like that and they laugh themselves silly and that just today <laughs> i had a i had a conversation with one of the chefs mm -hmm. and i used a bond quote and he said i'm too young for the, to recognize this quote and i said what year are you and he said i'm 82 and i said oh no because that quote was live and let die that was 1973 and the other <laughs> chef is much older mm -hmm. and he said oh mr lind you're absolutely right that was live and let die and i mm -hmm. said well you know your bond films mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they do they know exactly when i when i go around and whistle stuff uh they exactly know what Bond film that is from. And that is <laughs> that is really nice. So that's great. It, Bond is universal. Yeah, so yeah. You you can do that everywhere. I, I everybody who's listening today, go mm -hmm. through the pedestrian zone or wherever you live and whistle a famous Bond tune like "Live and Let Die," and everybody will automatically react to that in some kind of way because mm -hmm. one person will know it. Right, right. And, and that is a great thing. That is really a great thing. It's I love it too. I mean, I had I remember specifically one um, uh, once where, it, it also where I came to work and I, and there were a couple of work colleagues there and and I was not really aware. I, 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 I didn't know them that well. And one morning I just came out, came to work and I just got out of the car and had the Tomorrow Never Dies soundtrack on, and then I went uh, you know I went through the office a couple of times and they're going like. And they yeah, were like, do you like me? <laughs> and they, yeah, and then they're like, yeah, tomorrow never yeah. dies, cool. And then I say, yeah. oh, we speak the same language. How great is that? <laughs> yeah, and it's exactly that motif. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> it was me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go yeah, down there to we go. the cellar, I prepare something, and I, I'm exactly like. <laughs> right, always, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I. In and fun. another thing I envy you for is because uh, and we made couple of t uh, we made fun of it a couple of times, but the, the, there's also the motif in, in the world is not enough that I know I hear it in my head, but no way on earth I can I can whistle it, and you can, and I I never understood why I never can can properly whistle that melody, you which know which one, one I it? mean, uh, no. the, the one that is also heard in the in the, in the uh, Thames uh, the River Thames chase, you know. Ah, okay. Oh, I can't whistle. Yeah, this great. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had too much wine. Wait, wait. Give me a minute. Yes. <laughs> oh, now I now I mix them up. <laughs> the bridge, the pressure's on. Yes, it's also the same joke we always make. Yeah. Now tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. Never surrender. Dies, surrender. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, there we go. It's much better. It's much better. Yep. yep. Falsy towers. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I, I'm going to go back watch Faulty Towers. Now, right. Ho, ho, faulty Towers. Now that's <laughs> difficult with two red wines. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, Yannick, so much for uh, sharing your insights about um, Piers Brosnan's Tenure as 007. Um, I think we can both agree it wasn't the worst. And no. it isn't. And everybody who thinks it is should maybe reevaluate the series and uh, include our comments and standpoints on it. And maybe you arrive at a different conclusion. No. Maybe you don't. Um, in any case, and this is a very important point, each of us, we have our own likes and dislikes and every exactly. opinion is valid, mm-hmm. always is. And whether you like roger or you like george or you like sean or mm-hmm. what was his name daniel <laughs> <Craig. laughs> no, a little inside joke, joke just for you and i delivered it thank on a you. silver plate <laughs> thank yes. you so much it's uh, yeah you yeah yeah you, you know what to, just uh, just enjoy it you know? more uh, just enjoy it yeah just enjoy, enjoy it. it i mean treat it as popcorn cinema yeah, just instead of, you know, wasting your time going on social media and going through the trouble of, of commenting stuff and then just spreading that negativity, just enjoy it. Come on. Mm-hmm. Right. Thank you very much for having me, Benjamin. It was my pleasure. You're welcome. It was one of the nicer episodes <laughs> with you. <laughs> well, that's, that's not hard to achieve. <laughs> oh, 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 well... Panella, another coffee, please. Mm -hmm. Put it all on him. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Everybody, thank you very much for (laughs) listening. If you want more Golden Grotto Lounge or if you have missed other episodes, I invite you to look at the playlist. There are many more episodes uh, to laugh and (laughs) cry about. Mm. Um, Oh, Come on, you have to talk about these. It's good at fun. Point. No, no, it's good fun. It, it, it is good fun. I like yep. it. Uh, I too. really like it a lot because I can meet a lot of you and we can share opinions and that's mm-hmm. really great. And mm-hmm. if uh, 10 people like it, I'm happy. If 100 people like it, I'm even more happy. But uh, as long as everybody has fun and we enjoy ourselves, everything's good. So yeah. with that, I send you off into the night and probably Yannick as well. Well, I send you off into the night. Um, <laughs> and tune in next week for another s- ep- for b- bollocks uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah cunning linguist as always uh, tune in next week for another episode of the golden grotto lounge um have a good night good night <laughs>